Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Talking Dogs with Dante. Um, we had a free last Wednesday because of the dog shows, but um, unfortunately for us, uh, the numbers of corona infected people are growing uh, drastically in Croatia um, and many countries have put us uh, on the red list so there are not many options for us to travel anymore so I think that let's say from now on more or less I think I can promise to you that till the end of the year I will really try my best to have the interviews uh, every Wednesday in this time um, we had a very interesting interview two weeks ago with Christian Stefanescu a lot of comments, a lot of people watching. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be the same with this one. Already by the comments when we have um, announced who will be our guest today. Um, he is definitely one of the most popular and most famous uh, all breeds judges from Europe. He has judged all around the world. Uh, and I'm extremely happy that he accepted my invitation to be my guest tonight. Uh, Hans van den Berg, good evening. How are you today? Good evening. A bit nervous. <laughs> That's good, but positive nervous. So, so, so but do you know, Hans, do you know, Hans, you know, when people enter in your ring showing dogs under you and uh, then you always put a smile and you say a nice word and uh, you talk to them and not like other judges, you are much more uh, warm to, to the exhibitors. I will try to be like that to you now so that we break this, uh, this nervousness. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So yeah. now I and, am the exhibitor. Now you are the exhibitor, yes. Finally, I managed to be a judge once in my life. Listen, Hans, we have already uh, more than 100 people uh, watching uh, live this interview and uh, some uh, friends from you, uh, like Patricia Nemirovsky de Alcina from Argentina, writing so looking forward to hear this interview. Diego Garcia from the USA saying great interview today, not to be missed. Um, we have some very devoted people like Natalie Elon and hello, I'm on the way to help with the shelter giving birth, but we'll watch as much as possible. And many other comments, which I will try definitely to catch. There are so many comments and hellos to, to you, Hans, from all over the world. But I will try to catch on them a, a little bit later. First of all, um, as always on the start, I want to ask you, how much did your life change in the last few months? Because I know you have been used to... <laughs> to travel uh, more or less like all of us every weekend, packing, unpacking, uh, airports, uh, taxis, uh, hotels, uh, this, then at some point uh, your life became something else. Do you miss traveling? Do you miss judging? Do you miss your friends? How are you dealing with this corona situation? I don't miss the traveling because I have two hobbies. It is dogs and gardening. So now I think the garden looks more perfect than ever because I yeah. So, this, so I, I don't miss the traveling, and to be honest, it's also nice to have um, a break in the judging as well. Yes. Because if you go every week for me, that is a bit too much. Yeah, I think, I think in a way, all of us have enjoyed a little bit this break, even if we yeah. were thinking uh, that we cannot live without dog shows. But then when it came like this, I think to whoever you talk, everybody says, well, in a way, I have enjoyed a little bit to stay yeah. at home and to, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's nice. Um, anyhow, Hans, uh, first of all, uh, as usual, I want to go a little bit to your past, uh, to your start with the dogs. And uh, let's let's start uh, with the, with your kennel name, which was Rymor. Did I pronounce it well? Yes, that is Rymor because my f the first... Import was a Rayanda Rymor, that was a bitch from the famous uh, kennel, and um, and that's why we started with that name. Ah, okay, because I, I couldn't find the connection with the kennel no. name. So it was so Rayanda Rymor, so I think we start with Rymor. Ah, that's the story. Okay, what what I managed to find because I usually try to prepare myself for the for the interviews. Uh, what I managed to find on the internet is that you started showing dogs when you were 16 years old. Yes. But uh, but I, I'm curious, how did this happen? How did you enter in the in the world of the purebred dogs? No, and let's have a look. Uh, let's think about it. We we always had Scotties, and I think um, by we you, you mean your family? My family, my parents. Okay. Had so okay. I had them all my life, and I th uh, yes. And when I was and uh, 65 years ago, <laughs> we had a, we had a male, and I remember his name was Popov. 
it was a it was a brindle um, it was a brindle dog, and uh, and I had, I had a little book with the standards. So and then I looked at his uh, how he looked like, and then I could see he was undershot. So <laughs> I I said that was not a good cat, start. <laughs> that, that's not the show dog. And then I at high school there was a girl. And her parents had uh, adult terriers, and so they were very enthusiastic. And um, and then we got um, the first show that was a Welsh terrier, and he was a combination of a, a brother and sister, and he was completely mad. But we, we showed him, and I think we got a very good, and we were very happy because at that time a very good was a very good. Yes. And then. Then we got a bitch, Dumbarton Dusky, I think, yes, from the famous Dumbarton Kennels. And I went with my sister to the village. And I remember that we, had, we, we, go, we went by train and bus. And when we, got, when we went home, we had a, a six weeks old bitch. And uh, then we showed her at the club show and she won best bitch. And then she was a champion in, I think, four shows. That was the start. But so actually, actually, it means your parents were already involved in showing and, and no, 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 dogs. no, no, no. But uh, they had dogs, but it was not, never showing. You know, it was okay. no, no, never. So, so the story of showing and, and purebred dogs actually started with you. It started with me, and my sister is also. She's not keen on showing, but she loves dogs and she loves pedigree dogs as well. Wonderful. Okay, uh, what I found also, uh, Hans, is that you were involved uh, with three breeds more or less, uh, let's say, on a bigger scale. This is something that you mentioned in your CV. So yeah. I, would like, I would like to hear the stories about these three uh, breeds separately. Uh, so I think we can start with the Norfolks. You had Norfolks. Norfolks for some time. Okay, now we had, uh, we, we, we liked the Norfolks. And uh, I remember that we stayed at the Scotty Breeder, uh, Mrs. Mikovic. She was very famous in Scotties. And she said to us, it's not a good combination, Scotties and Norfolk. And we, we said, why? Because it's just two terriers. And she was right. It was not a good combination. What I think about Scotties, Scotties are, you know, a friend is a friend. If they hate the dog, they hate the dog. But friends are friends. Even with the Chihuahuas, it was never a problem. But the Norfolks in a, in a kennel or in a group, you can never trust them. They, they can start fighting all of a sudden. You, that, and then slowly, the Scotties started to enjoy fighting as well. <laughs> yes, so, that's and, a problem. And, uh, yes. And if they start to enjoy it, they really enjoy it. Yes. So I had the Norfolks and, and, uh, and the Scotties and... I had them in kennels, but we never liked kennels in a way. I, I like kennels for the nights, but I like them in the group to, to enjoy life. So, and then we stopped with the Norfolk. But I had an English champion, and I had a very nice, a Nenfen male, also very nice. I think he was unbeaten. He showed him a lot. And then with the Chihuahuas, it was 35 years ago, and I was judging in, uh, in Germany. And, um, and then at the toy uh, club, and then I saw a very nice male, Bell Morris Royal Rebel, I think. And I, we went, I went to the breeder, and she had a bitch puppy, six weeks old, so I came home, and we lived on a farm, and I said, I have a surprise. <laughs> it was in the plexiglass box, and, uh, and, uh, and Carl looked at it, and he said, what is this? I said, that is a chihuahua, and I love it. Yeah. And then, then she stayed, we called her, her, her kennel name was Marsola's Divine Romans. Nice. We called, her, we called her Juliana and I said, I think we can breed the royal family. And we did. Yes. So we had yes. Juliana, we had Beatrix, we had William Alexander. Yeah. Nice, that's, nice. That's so how, how long did you stay with the Chihuahuas? With the Chihuahuas we stayed, I think, till... Till the last one died, we, we bred two litters because that bitch, she, we showed her three times. I think she had two, uh, two CSAs and she was a reserve at the winner show. We had two litters and then they, they just died when they were old. We, we loved okay. them very much. Yeah. And yeah. at that time, 35 years ago, it was not very popular. 
Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. So I can imagine. So let's let's now come to to let's say to the love of your life, and these were the Scotties, and uh, this is the the breed that you still have at home. Yeah. Uh, so you have never break your connections with the Scotties, and I can no. understand that because once when you have a Scotty, you always need to have one by your side. Um, uh, so the Scotty the Scotty love actually started from your parents. It started from my parents, yes. But yeah. they were not, they were not interested in showing or anything. But yes, we had them, and I was so used to them. And I think we had Popov, and I had another Popov, and another Popov. That was <laughs> a clown, what I remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so you were in the in the beginning. You had you you were showing them and you were breeding them for how long? At some point, I know you stopped breeding. No, no, no. We we we, we never bred a lot because we had two full time jobs. And at that time, we we bred more for ourselves to have another okay. one, a nice one. That's it. So not for selling them. And then we, st I don't know. I'm so bad at names. I, I don't. At the end, I had I had bitches. I had I think five bitches with different CACs, but I never showed them more. And then they went to friends, and they bred a bit with them. Mm. But I went. Uh, but we we showed. I don't know how many years, but we showed a lot. But not yeah, yeah. at that time. You did not travel a lot. The farthest away was Luxembourg, I think, and we went yeah, to the yeah, Bund yeah. and the Bundesliga, and that was far, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Uh, that it was not like it is today that, that they, you travel all these distances no. all the time. And no. and tell me, tell me, Hans. Uh, then at one point you you continued to have Scottish as as your pets uh, at home, but you stopped showing them. I stopped showing them because I think uh, if you are judging a lot, um, if you are judging a lot, um, it's not a good combination, I think. Now I, I can say that is another story. I was judging in Israel years ago and there was a president. She had Scotties and she was ill and she said, can you have two of my Scotties? And I said to myself, two, now yeah, let's do one. So okay. I, she she gave me a black bitch bred by. Oh, it was uh, Rita Menashe. Yeah, yeah. And she gave me a black bitch, and um, and she was bred by Raya Yarvin and the later Raya. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. And, and so we showed her once, just as a joke, at our. It was an international show in Leiden, and we lived close to Leiden, and then she won a ticket. And that was the last time because people were looking at me and they say, oh, oh, oh uh, I am not sure if he's winning or losing, you know, and, uh, uh -huh. and, and you have to behave eh, if you are, uh, if you are. Uh, <laughs> this is the, the you, most you difficult can, part. <laughs> you cannot gossip. Yes, yes. But, uh, tell me, tell me, uh, uh, Hans, one, one thing now when you have mentioned because you, you became, uh, let's say, a famous popular judge and so on, and then you stopped showing. Uh, how it is when when some famous colleague judges show dogs under you? Do you feel uh, a little bit more under pressure because of this, or you no. don't care? No, no, no. It, I, I just I, I judge what I see. It's yeah. more. It's more. What what can make me more sad if it's good friend and he is showing a horrible dog? Yeah, yeah. This is all. That's, yeah, that's that's more painful for me. But in the yeah. nice. I, I do. I sh I, 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 yeah, that's how I am. Yeah. Hans, uh, listen, uh, can you just try to put your camera a little bit more down? Yes, like this, much better. Perfect. Yes, because we were losing a little bit your head okay. on the screen. So we, we want to have you fully on Is the screen. Better? Uh, much better now. Much better. Listen, there are so many comments already that uh, if I start to read them, I'm going to to spend two hours uh, only reading, but it's, uh, let me check, it's uh, about 120 people watching now, and uh, I see people saying hello to you from Israel, Norway, South Africa, a lot of people from Netherlands, Brazil, uh, um, Uruguay, uh, from many places, so uh, there are a lot of people um, who are watching it. Uh, Agneta Astrom from Sweden saying, also, and as exhibitor, it has been nice with the break, both as a breeder and exhibitor, sometimes it is too much. Um, and so, I, I, as I said before, I think many people actually have enjoyed this break. Uh, let's continue a little bit, Hans, with, with these breeds. 
three breeds that you have been involved, so the Norfolks, Chihuahuas, and Scotties. Um, when you compare the quality of these breeds when you started with them, I'm not going to say how many years ago, uh, and when you compare them through the years that you have been judging them all around the world, do you think that the quality is improving, is going up, or do you think that these breeds uh, are going down in the quality? I think in Scottish is much stronger than years ago. Okay. I think because you can see, you can find now Scottish all over the world in a good quality. In general, yes. you can find them in Croatia, but you can also find them in, let's say, Sweden or Russia. Um, Norfolk, I don't know. Norfolk are never very popular. They've never been very popular. And I think Chihuahua is, is a very strong breed at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But so this, this is good, yes. I think it's good when you have when you have breeds which are, let's say, going better in the quality. Yeah. That's a much better option than when they go down in the quality. Tell me, Hans, when we talk about Scotties, because it's the breed that you still have at home, uh, when, you, when you look at the Scotty, what do you find, let's say, that is one of the most important characteristics that defines the correct breed type of the Scotty. What you want to see when you look at the Scotty, what you want to see? He is, of course, low to the ground. He is sturdy. He is. He has a short back, a level top line. The tail is tight set. I think he the, the head is not overly long, but it is. It should be in balance with the body. And you see the 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 skull and the muscle are the same length. It is parallel. They have dark eyes. They have big teeth. They have yeah. front legs, a good forechest, and um, and that's that's what I like in a Scotty, and I like an active dog. I don't yeah. want kind of a Pekingese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. A lot of Scotties. That's, that's for me very important. That is a working. Uh, it is an active dog. That's in the standard as well. Yeah, yeah. I think many uh, Scotties have. Yeah, a lot of a lot of Scotties have lost uh, maybe a little bit of this uh, terrier temperament. I think that's one of the problems. And tell me, uh, because you judge the breed so often everywhere, everywhere around the world, you said that in your opinion the quality has improved, but what you find to be the biggest problem in the breed at the moment? The biggest problem in the... In the, in the, in the but that is very personally, I, I don't like too much exaggeration. And I mean too low to the ground. Too heavy in body. I want a normal dog, and uh, I, and there are a lot. Uh, there are a lot. But there was a time, I remember once in Spain that there was so. It was no substance. It was just fat. You know what I mean. And then yes. you have dogs, uh, and I think the head shape is very important with a nice ear set, small ears, and a very keen expression. Yeah, that's a Scotty. They come in, and you think, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true, that's true. Tell me, uh, uh, when when you are going abroad or whatever, when you, when you are invited to judge, um, is there a breed that you are always uh, excited to judge, and is there a breed that you let's say find very difficult for you after so many years to judge? Now I think w what is difficult that is a secret for me. You have secrets as well, but I yeah, have... yeah, of course, uh -huh. <laughs> and. Uh... But I don't tell you because uh, I have to judge them. And what is nice for me, I think it's nice when I have uh, a good number of dogs and high quality. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's nice. Sometimes that, you judge and you behave, but at least you know you have one of this and two of this. And you. But if you have, let's say, a champion class with uh, 50 French Bulldog males, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Tell me, Hans, we were talking now a little bit about the dogs, and now I want to talk a, a little bit about the judges, uh, your colleagues. Um, when you compare the quality of judges and of, ju of judging, let's say, uh, when you started judging, uh, and I read that you started judging in 1978, and when you compare to the quality of, let's say, young, young generations of the judges, do you think that we are going in the in the good direction, or you think that there is something we should be careful with? Oh, now I have to think. 
Maybe now, maybe when when I started, you had one breed, two breeds, and then you said I have four breeds. I remember Scotty Sky, Cairn, Westy, I four breeds. Now some going are going very fast, and if yeah. you go very fast, you do all the time things. You are not very, yeah. How do you say you you are not so comfortable about it? If if I do. Um, Breeds, I'm not so familiar to. It costs me more energy, but I have a lot that's for me comfortable. I can, I'm relaxed. I can talk and I can smile. But you know, and that's if you do, if you go so fast. I don't know if that's always correct. And sometimes it's yeah. very. Because I, 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 I think um, what is actually, let's say, the point of my questions, when we talk now about some people. Uh, we can talk about people like uh, Hasse, like Reiner, uh, Carlos Renau, a lot of people who, let's say, were considered to be legends in the dog world. And, uh, you know, what they would say about the dog or something, it was always very important and everybody would listen to them. Do you think that there are people in the young generations growing who will become this what they were at their time? No, I think we don't have stars in judging anymore. That's over. Yeah. And I mean, I think, yeah, what is a star in judging? No, no, yeah, not, not a star in judging, but the people whose opinion, whose knowledge was uh, was really important. And, and you know, um, I remember when even, even 20 years ago, there have been people like you and people from your generation that if you would show under this kind of person, when you would get a critique, you would read this critique. You would be interested to read what is in this critique. I uh -huh. feel that now people are not so much anymore interested uh, so much in the, in the opinion of of judges that we are losing a little bit this uh, this this part of the of the dog world. Yeah, that I, I don't I don't yeah I don't know if if you if you make a critique and it's only excellent type good mover. Good yeah. Condition, yeah. Yeah. I, I, but I, then I, we have come yeah we have come also have, to. But you have young judges, and they are very, they are very excellent, and they are yeah. very good judges. So you must not say that it was in the past better. No, yeah, no, this no. is what I'm asking. Yes. No. Yeah. So no. you think, you think the future looks good, in general, at the least at this looks point. Good if, if you have the guts to discuss what we're doing. I think some some young judges they know everything, and I will I will say to them. Uh, ask another person, uh, another judge, what do you think about my best of breed, uh, Shiwama? What do you think about my best? And then you learn because you have to learn all the time. But because sometimes I I remember I did once English setters and I came home and I said to myself, it was not a brilliant thing. Brilliant means that I had no type in my head, in my head because you have an American mm -hmm. type, you know, an English yeah, type. Yeah. And then I went, I, I think the, the week after I went to a breeder and then I I learned a lot, you know, because sometimes when you're in the ring, you are a bit confused. It's not always yeah. so easy. Uh, and, sometimes, and, and, and sometimes, yeah, you, you think, yeah, you did. Sometimes you do, you're not happy with what you did. Yeah, of course. Well, we, we all have good days and bad days. But uh, do, so. do you... Do you think, Hans, it's important to be, let's say, self-critical? Is it important, uh, in a way, when I hear this story uh, of you judging English setters, it means that you care. I think this is a sign that uh, that you don't go inside of the ring and you say, OK, I go and I do whatever I want and that's it. It means that, do you still, after so many years of judging, do you still care to do a good job in the ring? Yes, because now I, I remember a very funny story. Years ago, I did the, in at the Bundesliga um, Norris Terriers, and they came in champion class. A dog I will I will never forget. It was not good, so it got a very good. Then the man came with a bitch in champion class, and then I said to myself, "Oh, now oh yeah, a small excellent." And then he was best of breed, and in the finals, Cor was sitting next to me. He said to me. Who judged this? Not it's there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. So, so sometimes you must love it. I think um, you must be you must to be honest. You must look in the mirror and say, I did maybe not perfect, but I did it was an honest job. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Tell me, tell me. I have mentioned, I have mentioned when we started, uh, Hans, that you have this kind of a very special approach to to exhibitors. Uh, uh, you don't see it often, I must say, with with other judges. You always, especially when you see that it is somebody who is a beginner, you always have a, a nice word for them. You try to relax them a little uh -huh. bit, and so on. Uh, how much you think this is important? This is this is for me very important because if I'm standing there like a mummy, that's that's not my personality, you know. Sometimes, you, for example, when I go to the to Canada or to the U.S., then I have to behave, you know, and that, yes, and that yes. I try. And sometimes I think, oh, I made a mistake. And sometimes, you know, if they are nervous, I I can say, uh, I, I, I Madam, are you nervous? And then she said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I said, me too. And then I, <laughs> well, and then you know, and um, yeah, I always, but I, I maybe I, you know, the story that I was judging uh, ductling retrievers in in England. And there was an old lady, and she I said, Madam, up and down. She said, uh, I'm very old. And I said, Me too. <laughs> and then at my heart, I said, Come on, give me an arm. And we we walk up and down to the tree. And when yes. we die together, we are in all the magazines. <laughs> and that was, yeah. you know, in England, but you know, they were all laughing. And uh, yeah. yeah, because yeah. It, is a, it is a hobby. And we need the younger people. And I know so many people when you say it's a nice dog. Here, two weeks, no, two months ago, I was, I was here walking a Japanese pits. And I said to the lady, madam, it's a nice dog. Can you move up and down? And she said, why? I said, because then I can see her. Uh -huh. Can you show me? And now she's going to Maastricht for the first time. You know, oh, that, nice. And, and that's a nice story. And I think yeah. it's a very nice dog. Yeah, I think I think for uh, for the people who are just starting in dogs, I think that this um, let's say first contact with the dog show with the judge and everything is so important. And I think this is probably the moment when they are going to decide um, if they are going to stay in this world or they are going to stop. I think um, yeah. most of the people who had the first bad experience with the dog shows they have never gone back. So I think no. uh, it's also part of the judge's job to to try, let's say, in a way to attract new people to, to join the sport. I think this is yeah. this is very important. Uh, Hans, I have now a few very quick questions for you, uh, but usually people find them very difficult. Uh, you can think a little bit about them and and uh, try try to answer as best as you can. And uh, and then after that, we go again a little bit to the to the longer longer questions uh best show you have ever judged or let's say one show that you have judged that you will never forget well, but i never forget no but I, I you know i i told it before i um yes yes i i i i always remember a bit strange uh, stories Years ago, I did the 50 years anniversary show in New Zealand for the Welsh Corby Club. Okay. And um, best of breed was a bitch. And um, shown by a young girl. And then afterwards, the owners came and they were very old and they were not very healthy. And I think they were so happy. And I think... Shortly after the show, they went into a hospital, and I think they, one of them died. And these things I remember. I don't remember all the time the most fantastic poodle or the most fantastic, because there are so many nice dogs. Yeah, yeah, that's I, that I yeah, can agree. It has always to do a little bit with emotion. Yeah, yeah, of course. There is. There needs to be something that is going to keep it in your memory, yeah. some, some special story. That's true. Uh, do you do you remember, for example, one uh, one best in show lineup that you judged, uh, which has been extremely difficult for you because the quality of the dogs you thought was incredible? No, I think if you do if you judge in England all the groups, you fight against yourself. That's the most uh, uh, that is not easy. If you do yeah. all the groups. And that means that you like all of them, and then yeah. you have to fight against yourself. But normally, normally, um, 
yeah, it depends also a bit of the quality of the judges when you do the, let's say, best show. Sometimes you see nice dogs and they disappear all the time. <laughs> and like, yeah. you like, you think, oh, yeah. And he's again out. And yes, I, I remember, I remember a few years ago in, in Split, when, uh, when Sean Delmar was, uh, was judging in Split, and he was supposed to judge best in show, and uh, uh, when he finished uh, the dinner, he went to the main ring, and uh, he, his trousers broke. So we yeah. took him, a, we took him a taxi, and he has gone back to the hotel to change for the best in show. And then he came back just like five minutes before the best in show. He lined yeah. up his lineup better, and he said, "And where are all the dogs that I liked?" <laughs> I said, "Well, they are not here anymore." So they were yeah, not sometimes here. Oh, that can happen. Yeah, sometimes. But happens. maybe but, it's good for the. Good for the exhibitors. Yeah, I, I think it's good that people have different opinions. Yeah. Of course, it's not. It would be boring if it would be always the same. Um, tell me, Hans, uh, favorite Scottish terriers, Scottish terrier of all times for you, not bred or owned by you. Scottish terriers not bred. I think I did them years ago at the World Show, the World Show in Poland, and there was a very nice. German bread bitch. I don't mm -hmm. remember the name, but it was very nice. And then I think you can have, you have nice dogs, to be honest. You can have nice dogs in Russia. I think I liked, do you know, I'm so bad, the name's the American one some years ago, who won, um, who won Crufts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was yeah, the, name? the name? It was Russian with love or something. Yeah, something like this from Russia with love. Yes, yeah, I so don't remember the full I name. Judge, yeah. I judged yeah. in I judged it in uh, in uh, Florida, and it was really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, tell me, Hans, the best dog you ever uh, had as the owner or as a breeder? I think dog? I think we we never had a lot of dogs, but I had a funny story. Um, we. We had in Holland, uh, you know, the names in Scottish. We had a, 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 a Scotty called Gavin Landlord, and he was very mm -hmm. nice. And we had a nice bitch, a Rianda bitch. And when and when we, I was, I think I was not there. Cor went for the uh, mating, and when he came, she said, "Oh, he is a bit more expensive now." <laughs> so. <laughs> He paid the extra money, and then uh, we came back and we bred Raymore Flesh Gordon, and I think he was at the end he was better than his father, who was an English champion. And That's I think nice. he, he he was very nice. Yes, yeah. I think to be critical, his front could be better because if you breed them a bit more elegant, you can sometimes have a not the perfect front. But yeah. it was yeah, that happened. Yeah. yeah, there is no perfect dog, so no. we are fine with that. Tell me, tell me, Hans, um, one breed that you never had at home, but you would like to have. I think, to be honest, I like to have a French Bulldog. Ah, that's interesting. <laughs> Is it something new or it's from before that you like to, to have it? No, no, we have friends. We have friends in the north of Holland and we visited them now uh, last week and they had the most funny French Bulldog. He's so nice. Yes. He looks into your eyes. A Scotty is so different, you know. They are looking around. What yeah. can I do? Yeah. And and he comes with his uh, play. He's, he has a ball and he comes to you. He sits and then <laughs> and yeah, we have yeah. friends with a champion male, a fawn champion male, very nice. And that's also a very nice dog. I like the breed a lot. Should, should, should I be should I be now a little bit bad and provocative? And ask you, do you want a Frenchie with a long nose or with a short nose? I want a, just a, 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 a dog according to the breed standard, so and never, never a long nose. Okay. Then I go, <laughs> then I go for another breed. Yeah, okay. Tell me, tell me, Hans, when you think um, about one dog person that is not alive anymore and you terribly miss, who, who do you think about? Who I admire? Somebody who is not alive anymore and you, you, you terribly miss. One dog person who is not alive anymore and you really I, miss it. I think, I think, who do I terribly miss? That is, 
let's see, let's have a, let's uh, think about, I think who was for me, and uh, do you, uh, in, in terriers, um, we had um, an, an adult terrier breed who was very, uh, very nice. And we had uh, Mr. Uppenkamp, I liked very much. So it was some German uh, terrier breeders I liked very mm -hmm. much. Yeah, in yeah. Holland, in Holland, yeah, the, the most of them are still alive. That's good. That's good even, news. Even, uh, even our Mr. Van der Weyen, he's yeah, in the yeah. 90s now. Yeah. He yeah, that's good. A good person. Tell me, tell me, Hans, um, when you think about one breeder who year after year is managing to produce top quality dogs, doesn't matter in which, in which breed, um, which name comes to your mind? Let's say somebody, one person from the Netherlands and one person from the rest of the world. One person who always impressed you by, by his breeding. No, I think I think to be honest, that is uh, that is the, the Huikershovens. They always, you know, they always come back with a nice dog. Mm -hmm. And I think abroad there are so many, but I was very impressed by a Gordon setter breeder in uh, in in Melbourne. And I think it is not easy to to breed good Gordon setters, but she is always coming back with top quality. Yeah, yeah, um, that's not an easy breed. Yeah. Uh, tell me, tell me, uh, Hans, um, one still active judge, uh, which you have always admired for his knowledge, uh, presence, uh, somebody that you really admire uh, as a judge and, and is still actively judging, one person from Netherlands and one from the rest of the world. No, the rest of the world I admire in a way Per Iverson. Mm -hmm. You know, not from yeah, absolutely. Per is a great guy. It is, and he's an absolutely dog person, and he's very knowledgeable, and he always behaves very nicely. Yes. And in Holland, and he's a wonderful person. This is always very important. Yeah, and he's a wonderful, yeah. and he's a wonderful person. And in Holland, I I have to think a little bit. Um, <laughs> who do I admire? There, I think there are more I admire. No, I don't know. I don't know really special names now. No. Okay. Let's leave it that way. Tell me, Hans, um, do you remember one dog that you have judged and that you will never forget? Doesn't matter if it was uh, in a in it was a long time ago or or not so long time ago. One dog that has really made impression to you that every time when you think about one breed or something, you always think of this dog. I don't need the name, just tell me maybe the, the occasion or the breed. And can you move the camera a little bit down again because it has gone up again? Um, and I, I, I will always remember a standard pool in England. Uh, I judged best in show in Darlington and it was raining and raining and raining. And, um, and then we were standing in the mud with the boots on, and then this poodle came in, a white poodle, and in such a wonderful condition. And I remember years ago, I was judging in Norway a small show, and it was one of this, one of that, and it was raining and raining and raining, and then there came in the Westie, mm -hmm, Ike Barra Barra. I, I still remember the name, and he was so fantastic. Yeah, and, yeah. and that, that can happen. Yeah, of course, sometimes yeah. there, there comes a dog that, that you will never forget in your life. Me. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, Hans, uh, my last question from this uh, part of the, of the quick questions. Um, is there something more that you would like to achieve as a, as a, as a judge? No, no, no. I, I never I, I, I never think about what, what is achievement in uh, in judging, yeah, I don't know something no, something I, that that you, that you would I, like to do and you didn't never no, did. No, I like to judge dogs, and um, it doesn't matter where it is. If I am if I am at a small show and it is and I have good dogs and it is a good hospitality and it is friendship, then I like it. But I have no dreams. Let's say that I judged. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, perfect. Not how perfect. I am. Okay. Tell me, tell me, Hans. Um, we start now with with this second part of questions. Um, you are one of the very few people 
who had the honor to judge two best in shows at the two European dog shows. What kind of feeling is that? I, I, to be honest, I, I, you know more about it than I, I do. Is it <laughs> I do? Yes. Oh, yeah, I did too. Um, you did thing, too, yes. <laughs> Brussels and Leeuwarden. <laughs> I am, maybe I'm a bit strange, but you're right. I did it in Leeuwarden and I did it in, uh, in, um, in, in Leeuwarden. It Brussels. was an African, African hound and in Brussels it was a Lakeland Terrier. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is an honor. It is an honor. And of course, you are then, you are very... Uh, yeah, stressed. You are looking forward. What kind of dogs do I get? And uh, yeah, I, I you enjoy it, and and that's also yeah. an honor, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, tell me, uh, um, it's very. I, I'm going to ask you. Um, it is very, very strange, or let's say it's not very often that a foreign judge uh, judge European dog show or world dog show best show in another country. How did it happen that you judged in Brussels? I mean, did, that was really a great honor for, for you from the, from the Belgian Kennel Club to, to ask somebody who is not from their own country. To be honest, they asked you. I, I, yeah. did, not, I did not. They asked you and I didn't say, why do you ask me? No, no, I know, I know. But I think, I no, think this is I, really... I have no like idea. A, they, that's, maybe, that's a kind of a very special honor in a way yeah, yeah, uh, no, to no, be invited. No. And I, love, and I love Belgium, and, and now yeah. I live close to Belgium, maybe. Yes, yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's good. Okay, um, I want to ask you one thing um, uh, connected with this European dog show in, uh, in Belgium. Um, at the gala, gala dinner, uh, you were asked to give a speech as a best in show judge, and um, you were speaking about these uh, judges who are changing countries, and I know that has been a video that has been shared one million times on Facebook all around, um, yeah. And it has caused, obviously, uh, a lot of controversy. A lot of people were writing how proud they were of you to, to mention something like this. Obviously, I suppose there has been also some people who were not happy uh, about this. Uh, how do you feel about this now? Uh, are you sorry that you have done this speech? No, you still... no, no. It is strange. If Let's say that... The... If I have the feeling that I will have problems here, that, and then I move to Croatia. Yes. It is, it is strange. I think if, if you, if I have problems here, uh, you must not accept me. Yeah. But I, I know people, if they, they move to another country just because, oh no, and then it's, there's more, there are also people, they move to another country and then they are all around there in a second. <laughs> and then they come okay. back and, and, and they're all out. That is strange. Yeah. You must know and to think about it. I know it. Yeah. You know it as well. Yeah. So, did did some colleagues take it bad on you because of this speech? Was mm, um, there some some didn't say hello to me anymore? Okay. Some <laughs> said to me, "Hans, you did a very st stupid thing because you will never judge at the at the European show anymore." And some, I remember. Some FCI members, I cannot mention names, and they were, they said, "Hands, you did a good job." Yeah, yeah, Plus, okay. I, I think this is this is with everything we do in our life. There are always people who will like something and people who will not like something. No. We need to live but with that. The, the story was that that the story was that I said as a joke, I open an hotel in the south of Europe, and if you have problems with your uh, license, I can help you. Yeah, yeah, I and remember. I, I and I also said, if you are getting older, because in Finland, I think if you are getting 80, you cannot judge anymore. I can fix you in another country and then you can go on forever. And uh, did, the, did the business start for you? Did you how it no, worked the hotel? I think if, if I start a business now again, it will be super. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it will. Yes. Uh, listen, Hans, one, one more thing when we are touching the, the subject of these uh, big shows. Um, a lot of people were against, and I know that your kennel club was against, uh, against the World Dog Show in China. Uh, yeah. you, have gone to, you have been invited to go there. You have gone to judge the World Dog Show in China. Uh, yeah. Do you think that the, the World Dog Show in China was a good idea? 
from the FCI, or you think it was not a good idea? First of all, it was, uh, it was the election was in a democratic way. I think that they got it, so all the, the countries voted for it. And uh, I said yes to the to go because we had a discussion here at home with friends and with score. But I I have been there before, and I helped a lot of people. He's streaming, he's showing, I'm testing uh, judges in China. And then I said to myself, no, 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 I have the friends, and I know so many people who love dogs, I don't let them, I, I go for them. Yeah. That, was, that was the reason. And I think uh, if, you, if you don't go, you don't have any influence anymore. And I will always remember when Thomas Jacques did the speech, he said, I'm proud to be here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, and boycotting is no, no. So you, you are happy? You are happy that you have been a part of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's go, Hans, now to the to the part of the interview that I think it's going to be uh, most interesting for uh, for a lot of people, um, considering the 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 situation in Holland uh, at the moment. Um, and I'm going to start with a question, which uh, probably people would think that it will be um, asked in the end. But instead, I will do the opposite and I will ask it as a first question. Uh, did Netherlands lose the fight? And did Netherlands lose the Brachy Brits? Um, we, we lost the fight, but I'm not so sure if the fight was very clever. Because in 2018, um, the managing director of the Kennel Club did, uh, but I will, I, will, I will have a look. Um, he did um, a speech at the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. And that was a discussion group about animal health and welfare and extreme breeding of dogs. And, um, and then, and then, at his speech, he showed a French bulldog, a kind of a French bulldog. I think it was a crossbed, and there was written, um, functional flat face. And then, then he said, for the French bulldog, we are looking for the best rules to implement. So, beside the fitness, we are planning to implement more rules about appearance. And that was, that was for me the start that it was very easy for the government to deal with the Kennel Club because he did this speech without any communication with the uh, judges uh, association or the breed clubs. And that was for me a shock. Okay, and and you think you think that there is a way that this situation with the Brachy Brits in Holland will be fixed, or you think this is something that we will never be able to to fix again? I think I think this is not the only thing. We need a kennel club who is fighting for the breeds. If we had um, we had, there's more. We had in uh, Tallinn last year the breeding commission of the FCI, and there was the delegate of the Dutch Kennel Club, and she showed the most horrible dogs. Are you interested in uh, showing? Uh, Absolutely, yes, yes. Okay. This is why this is why one, you are here. Just just one. put the camera a bit down again, please. Can okay. You see it? Yes. Yes, we can see it perfectly. Yes. Do you need yes. another one? No, no, it's enough. For me, it's okay. enough. Okay. And uh, I asked one of the delegates uh, about it, and he, he said to me, yeah, this was going to be mandatory in the Netherlands. So, so we need, you know, the clubs are now fighting against the kennel club, and the kennel club should fight for them. 
yeah that's not that's not an easy situation but uh, you you mentioned some of these stories from the from the start of this uh, do you do you know now more or less um, exactly uh, how did this story start why did this all happen why uh, why 12 breeds why all the brachy breeds when we know that uh, that not all the all the brachy breeds have problems with boas uh, how did this story start in the Netherlands? No, the, the minister didn't ask for the breeds. The Kennel Club said it. So you want to say that the Kennel Club offered to the government 12 breeds, which yeah. they think they should be changed. But what is the problem with a, what is the problem with a Japanese chin? I or don't a know. Charles? Yeah. Or a uh, Griffon Bruxelles? Tell me. You yeah. Were yeah, I know. I know. I had I had this uh, this interview with uh, with Edwin and with Mika, and they were showing some of these uh, um, some of these uh, papers from this Agria insurance company and so on. And there were absolutely uh, so many Brits who had more problems with these Boas diseases than, for example, what you mentioned, Japanese chills or Gripons or or things like this. This is why, for many people, it was not clear. Why did the government go against all these 12 bricks? This is something it's that not, is... It, it's not clear for us as well. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I think, I think that we had a discussion at the... We, we had a discussion at the... No, let's... Um, let's another look. We, we were obliged to come to a meeting for the judges of the short-faced breeds. And in the first letter, was when, when the, the, sorry Hans, when, when did when it was this this meeting? Um, four weeks ago, maybe. Ah, okay, okay. And, and the letter in the letter was written: criteria by law by law will have influence on the way you will judge these short-faced breeds. And of course, all the judges at the at the meeting said no. We are judging according to the FCI. And now we get another letter, and they said, "Of course, you have to judge according to the to the FCI." But we that is, and now and now and now people exhibit a thing that we are judging um, according to a special standard. But the, let, I have let's talk. Let's talk about the breeds. I think. Can you imagine that you have Boston Terriers and you cannot breed anymore? This is this is this is also another thing. But like, um, if you talk, if we talk practically, and uh, I'm just trying to to imagine what can happen in the future, uh, you say that you should judge these twelve breeds by the FCI standard, but in the same time you forbid them to be bred by the FCI standard. It means you that when you yeah, but you can you can you can show you can show an import at anything. Yeah, yeah. So, but so, but, so but let's thing, say if yeah. the if the if the the Dutch breeder will continue to breed by the rules of the of the kennel club, then all the dogs are not going to look like they should look like by the FCI standard. Yeah, you are correct. So it means that Dutch breeders are going to breed the dogs. That are going to get goods and very goods from the Dutch judges. Am I connecting it correctly? That's co yes, it's correct. Okay, that, that's a kind uh, kind of a strange situation. So Anyhow, can, you imagine, uh, can, you, uh, can you imagine that I judge your Pekingese in Belgium and you get best of breed, and yeah. I judge the same dog in Holland? And no, no, no. We we all judge according to the standard, and if we cannot judge according to the standard, we will not judge anymore. Yeah, this this I want to ask you, uh, Hans. You have published uh, one letter uh, a few days ago uh, with the signatures of a, from a lot of uh, uh, Dutch judges um, who are judging these uh, these twelve oh. breeds, and uh -huh. all these judges have signed the kind of a paper where they are stating that uh, wherever they go, they will continue uh, yeah. to judge by the FCI standard. Does it mean that the judges who didn't sign this paper? are going to judge in another way. They have to explain themselves what they are doing. Because that's that kind of... We are not responsible for the other ones. 
we do our best. We did a meeting. We are we are trying to to have all the judges together. And if you don't if you don't sign, maybe there is a reason. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, because what what it was. Uh, what it was strange for me about this letter that you have published, I would think that there is no need that anybody sign a paper saying that he will judge by the FCI standard because this is something that he must do by the FCI. This is not something that you can choose. Okay, today I want to judge by the FCI standard and tomorrow I don't want. But so you I, can I would... have, yeah, but you can have another idea about the way you will judge. Yeah, yeah. So the things are getting complicated. Um, <laughs> let's say um, I want to ask you, Hans. You speak uh, uh, you speak uh, uh, very openly about all these problems uh, on the social media, and uh, I think because, that uh, because we, we do it because we I want to fight for these breeds. Yes. Can I, I I can you imagine? I have here, let's say. Uh, Afampinche, oh, no, no, let's say Afampinche, let's say Griffons. They are healthy, they are good breathing, and all of a sudden I cannot breathe anymore. And look at the look at the head shape in the standard. No placement between the eyes. How will you how will you breathe a Griffon with a longer nose and a bit undershot? It, it is it is. I think I think the only solution is that we as countries are united. We do the same um, health tests and not what we do in Holland, but come on, go to the uh, Cambridge system that is more than a longer nose and that we do the same system and that the FCI um, maybe could lobby in Brussels as well. And that's the only way we can survive, I think. Because in yeah. Holland, there are now, there are more, of course, there are more short faced uh, breeds. I think there are 30 breeds now on the list. So if the Kennel Club is not fighting, we, we lose the whole game. So you think you think that this list is not going the end? Is not the no, end? You no, think no, that... no, 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 no. We have animal and a right, and now they are also looking for dogs uh, uh, below ten kilo. This is Chihuahua, and uh, no, no, no. That goes on boxers. Okay, tell me, tell me, um, Hans. Uh, as I said, uh, you you speak very openly about it uh, on Facebook, and uh, a lot of uh, let's say important people from the from all around the world are commenting and giving you support for your fight uh, for the things. Uh -huh. uh, do you do you think this is going to bring you into trouble with uh, with your own cannon club? No. Why? I'm asking. Did you no. did you did somebody say to you that you should not do this or something? No, no, no. no. I, I didn't do anything. I just I just uh, published the things what is correct. Uh, no. And okay. of course. Okay. Of course, we uh, no, no, no. The only thing is when you don't, when you don't follow the standard. That was very interesting. People are discussing uh, with me, um, and there was one lady. She said to me, an English, an English, uh, no, a French judge, a very nice lady. She said, if we FCI judges start to work in the interest of the crossbreeds far from the standards, then we should resign. Yeah. We are supposed to be guardians of these standards and help towards the selection of the best dogs. Like you, she said to me, I'm ashamed of this kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah this is <clears throat> this is one question that I have that I have asked uh, to to all my guests when I was talking about this subject. So I'm going to ask to you too, because um, uh, the Dutch Kennel Club, in a way, is saying they will not allow crossbreeding. They don't want to to crossbreed these breeds. But in the same way, do you think that there is any way to get these breeds get a longer nose unless to cross them with another breed? I, I have no idea. Because I, I'm thinking, like, how how can you get how can you get, let's say, a French bulldog or an English bulldog with a long nose? 
unless you you cross breed it with another breed. No, you know, and 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 imagine we are in Holland, and a French bulldog is a French breed, so we have to go back to the country of origin. How can we how can we change a Croatian breed here in Holland? Uh, I think I think that there is no there is no solution for it. We have a standard. We have a. We, we have the country of origin, and they can decide what they want to change, but not another country. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not an easy. It's not an easy situation. Um, uh, there are uh, Hans in in the Netherlands now. Few of the groups, uh, some of the breed clubs, uh, associations, who are trying to to fight. Let's say the same thing that you are fighting. They are going to the to the meetings with the cannon clubs. They are trying to to do something about this. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of most of them are publishing the letters saying that there is not a lot of improvement uh, in the negotiations with the cannon club. They are quite no. disappointed, and so on. Uh, why 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 is the cannon club not going? Let's say a little bit more open about the subject and trying to to explain what actually is happening and what they are trying to do. Yeah, that is the that is that is the question. I don't know. Uh, we have been to one meeting with the board member for the judges, and it was more. You can read it everywhere on Facebook. It was more a, a, a fight, and I think they should show their emotion, and they should say, "This is so so painful for the breeders." You know, I, I I cannot understand it. It is so painful that you don't show anything. You you you, yeah. That makes me so sad about it. And what's what is now happening? I think some breeders will will move to to uh, to Belgium. Some to Germany. Yeah. Um, and if if the cannot let should talk to the people but you know i think at the moment when i i had now the last letter here they don't trust the kennel club anymore that is important yeah. so i think i think there was an, an idea to have the the the, the 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 pedigrees back and that the dogs um, should um, have a test uh, a health test uh, at 40 places with 40 vets all over Holland. And that was a good idea, I think, because mm -hmm. health is not only this length of measure, and we all know. Yeah. This is, this is, this is actually the problem which, uh, which most of the breeders are mentioning and, and, uh, and saying that uh, uh, maybe, in a way, we would all be agree about the fact that Netherlands comes and say, OK, let's make the nose longer. And we have solved the problems. I think that would be a good initiative, but that's not true. The long no. noses are not going to solve the problem. No. Uh, so we are trying to do something which is not going to help to help to anything. This is this is the part which I don't understand. How it is possible that there are no people who can explain, and I think that there are enough because I spoke also in my in my interviews mm -hmm. with the veterin with the veterinarians, mm -hmm. and they say there are absolutely no uh, evidences that the long nose is going to solve the problem. No, it, it is for me also a mystery because, and there's also another thing, at the meeting with the, with the uh, board member of the, for the judges, we asked about the RSI, that is the health check. When we judge, we say uh, eyes for this for special breeds. You know, they do it all over the, in Sweden. So, we asked about the result of it, and they said there was nothing because if you look at the Griffon health problems, zero. There was no judge who checked something strange with health, with the breathing. Sorry, I'm, I'm now. Uh, I'm, I, I will say it again. Um, when we judge these breeds, French bulldog or uh, Griffon bruxellois, we check in detail the points you know is the open nostrils uh, breathing 
And in Shembri, there is nothing. There is nothing in a Japan chin, what I saw. There is nothing in a king child, but we don't have many king shells. But that's also a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, Hans, before, before I... Um... I continue with the, with a few more questions that I have. I would like to 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 read few of the comments. Uh, there have been so many. There have been uh, 81 comments till now. So um, I'm not going obviously to to manage to read them all, uh, but I will try to find some uh, some uh, which are let's say important to read. Uh, uh, we have a um, comment from Martin Versluis. He says we need help from all breeds to save all pedigree dogs in Holland, and hopefully the FCI will help us also. Jill then saying I'm so grateful to be able to see these interviews. I get so much information on the state of our breeds. Breed clubs throughout the world should be paying attention. Uh, Peter Akat saying the fact is the most powerful enemy does not come from the outside, it comes from the inside. Vence uh, Charlotte Scully saying, it's great that you speak up for the brachycephalic breeds. Um, let me see. Uh, Leah van der Ven say, uh, this is probably about the letter that, that we were talking about. She says, 49 out of 56 judges signed the petition. Um, Cindy Kersmeyer saying we have done it because we care about these breeds and we care about our true breeders. Um, Leah van der Ven saying, Ante, that is what we want to know too. But um, Maya Sandman saying dealing with activists is never about reason or compassion or empathy. Uh, Marion Radstock saying uh, who made the speech for him? I don't know. Uh, Peter Akkad saying, um, let me see, uh, the pity is that so many do not care, even breed clubs which should support. We here have dogs which already look like those on the pictures hold up, uh, owned and bred by officials. So I'm not optimistic, think we have already, uh, already lost the fight. Uh, let me see what what more we have. Uh, Marion Razdok saying we are going to fix it. Uh, Maria Luisa Doppelreiter is saying dogs from these breeds when well bred don't have problems. They live a long healthy life. Uh, Peter Acker saying this interview is fantastic. Very open words are spoken. So there are a lot of comments, Hans. Uh, uh, a lot of people. I'm listening. I think that's important. I think dog people are not very united here. You say, for example, oh, I have a, a golden retriever, so I don't have the problem. Yeah. And the problem will come, will attack all the breeds. So I think we have to, as, as pedigree dogs, we have to stand up and unite. Even here, I can see it is not easy to have people together. They, that's, if you have the farmers here, you know the farmers, they are... Yes. They are organized fantastic in a second. Yeah. But now, now we start to be organized as well. I think it's just I'm now speaking here, but maybe you uh, you've you've seen the names of other judges as well. Uh, yeah. I think very active is also uh, Hildebert Hundeken, mm -hmm. a very a judge and a very. Yeah, he has, he has he has published uh, also a long yeah. letter a few days ago saying that he doesn't see the point of all these meetings with the Cannon Club no. because they are not uh, going in the right direction. And, and I agree with you, Hans. I think, the, I think the two main problems that we have, first of all, that still in the dog world that are too many people who think, I don't have this breed, this is not my problem. That's I it. Don't want to, I don't want to be a part of it. And then the second of it, um, what, it what it actually saddens me, is that um, it all at the end looks um, as a kind of a fight between people uh, of these breeds with the kennel club when actually should be a joint fight against somebody else. Uh, the kennel club and the breeders and the breed clubs should work together against the people who are trying to bring these rules. 
not yeah. one against another because no. uh, this will not bring bring us anywhere. Um, you mentioned you mentioned Hans uh, a little bit earlier, Germany, um, and I, I didn't have time today, but I have seen the cover of the of the new uh, issue of Our Dogs published two days ago. And there has been a big article about the government trying to implement more or less uh, or the same or very similar rules about uh, brachy breeds in Germany. Uh, is this what, what we were talking from the beginning that the biggest problem of this story of Netherlands is this domino effect that after mm -hmm. Netherlands has done this, many countries will just, let's say, do the same thing. Yeah, and at the end we don't have any uh, pedigree dogs anymore. Because yeah. how do they look like? We uh, there are breeders, generations, generations, um, trying to breed good look, uh, healthy, typical dogs. And then it's over. And what is coming here? What's coming? That is the what do you see? Because you, you see then at the end, you see here French Bulldogs bred in at puppy farms, expensive, different colors, blues and everything. Uh, no health tests, nothing. So we need to fight for our pedigree dogs. We, we need to fight for our pedigree dogs, yes. And, and, and you start to think, I have Scotties all my life. Now, we talk about 65 years ago. I think... That's my passion, it's my hobby, I love it, and they are healthy. But all of a sudden you start to think, oh, I, I have to buy a Labradoodle. Yeah. Because they are healthy and don't believe what, it. Yeah, what it, what it also bothers me, um, Hans, uh, in all this, not only the story about Netherlands, but in general uh, about these stories, uh, all these rules uh, by the government and also some of the rules that are being done by the cannon clubs are for the, let's say, passionate, uh, smart, uh, responsible breeders. But for the puppy farmers, there are no rules. No. Nobody's controlling them. They can breed no. whatever they want. They can breed short nose, long nose, no health test, nothing. Uh, actually, at the end, these... these uh, these uh, rules are not saving this situation. They are making the situation only more dangerous because people yeah. will still want, want English Bulldog and French Bulldogs with yeah. a short nose, but they will not be able to buy them from the responsible breeders, so they will buy them from the puppy farmers. And the breed is just going to be more and more destroyed. So now I can interview you now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm just... I'm asking you. You are, you. you are right. What can I say? You are you are clever, and you yes, you, you, it's perfectly what you say. That's you, you. You cannot. I think we must start in 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 Holland. We the logo in Holland is Houder van Honden, loving dogs. We must start with saying loving pedigree dogs. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a good start. I agree with That's you. A good start, and then yeah. you must. But, you must promote them and promote them because they are. And what, what is also so sad, I got a mail from a breeder of English Bulldogs. He said, Hans, I did so my best. It cost me a fortune to do all the tests. And now at the end, I have nothing. Yeah, yeah this is what it is. That uh, uh, years and years of work of, of responsible breeders are being thrown in the garbage uh, for yeah. nothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we have uh, uh, a comment from uh, Patricia Nemirovsky, the Alcina. She's saying, first they came for ears and tails, but I didn't care because I didn't have those breeds. Then they came for brachycephalic, but I didn't have those either. Then they came for my dogs, but there was nobody to defend me. So this is, I think, a, a good explanation, That's unfortunately. That's a good explanation. And we together yes. with our Scotties, we are also on the list now with our short legs. Yeah. yeah, we will see. Tell me, Hans, uh, in, in all this uh, extremely difficult situation uh, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, what do you think that the FCI can do about it? How, how it can help? I, oh, that's, that's a difficult question. I... I 
I think now, I think, I hope, let's, let's, let's do it this way. Um, that was not my idea, but this Hildevard Hundeken uh, said it. I said, he said, um, if we, we get the, the pedigrees back, um, then we will breed a litter, let's say French Bulldogs, and we let them check by these 40 vets around Holland. Uh, with the Cambridge system. And then, of course, you will have problems because you are breeding against the law because the law is this. this huh? And then I think you must go to... Um, you do... I, what's the English word? You go to, the, to a lawyer and you will explain that you did a good job and that you, you did a better test than the, the Utrecht test from Holland. You know what I mean? But yeah. Is it, is it, do you understand what I mean? So, yes. so you do an, another test um, and, uh, and then you can fight against the law that your test is better than the one here in Holland. Mm -hmm. But I hope that our kennel club should fight for you. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is very very difficult that uh, that in a way you have a situation in Holland where um, the breed clubs are not together with the kennel club but in a way are again not I will not say against but they are let's say having completely different opinions than the kennel club yeah. I and think the, I think and when you see the communication is not so fantastic yes yes I I, I was talking also about this with many people and uh, Christian also was saying two weeks ago and many others that uh, a lot of these problems actually came because of a uh, wrong communication. Mm -hmm. There is there is no there is no good communication between the kennel clubs and the breed clubs and 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 uh, and the breeders and okay, but we are where we are. Okay, let me read a few of the comments. Uh, uh, Brina Tomer saying very wise words from Mr. Wandenberg. A big thank you for standing up for the Brachy breeds and purebred dogs in the hall. Um, Yvonne Sandberg Aber saying smuggled dogs, animals, rescue dogs, animals, no pedigree breeding. It is in 99% of the above mentioned animals that have been exploited and something must be done to help the animals. Why is it our humans right to breed animals without any requirement? for education and control. We must demand new laws that make the breeding of animals without education punishable, if not criminal, worldwide. I see no other way to help the suffering animal and protect the pedigree breeds in order to also get the control over the puppy mills and farms. Uh, Maya Sandman saying government poisoned with activists, media poisoned with activists, our kennel club poisoned with activists, it's like fighting against windmills. They prepared years long and we didn't see this coming. Um, Jako Breuersma is saying the FCI should tell the Dutch Kennel Club to follow their own rules. Uh, the decision made by the mm. Kennel Club was made without consulting the members. Uh, Martin Verslu is saying to tell the Dutch Kennel Club that they have to give our pedigrees because both parents have pedigree. Hopefully the FCI will do that. Um, Jill then is saying with Boas testing, uh, how would the breeder know if the veterinarian isn't the government pick? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, I see that people are uh, in a way very, very, uh, uh, very, how to say, sad about the situation because uh, uh -huh. they don't know what to do and what is going to happen. Uh, Let's say we are coming to the end of the interview, Hans. Um, you are fighting for this. You have become, let's say, one of the of the of the faces of this fight for the Brachy breeds. Um, uh, if you, if no, 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 I'm not a face. I think the faces are the 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 presidents and the breeders. I, I'm my face. I. They, I, I offered my support to them because they know, they know my face. So, you know, that's... This is what I'm easy. saying. I, I, think, okay. I think your face means a lot for them because uh -huh. I think that a lot of these breeders uh, 
uh, got really, um, let's say, more brave, more courageous when they saw that uh, people with, with your name and your reputation yeah, are standi standing behind them. And he, uh, let's say, a girl with a Boston Terrier, she, she wanted to, she started now breathing and she cannot breathe. And that's painful for me. Yeah. Young uh, and so. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, it is it is painful for the young generation, and it's even more painful for the people, as you say, who have invested so many years of their life for yeah. uh, responsible breeding, and now they don't have nothing anymore. No. Um, but what I want to ask you, Hans, um, if um, if the Kennel Club or somebody from the FCI uh, would ask to you uh, and say, "Okay, Hans, tell us what we can do." Tell us how we can change this situation. Tell us what we can do to help the breeders and the breeds. What would be uh, your answer? Now, first of all, we need a new board. And I think I think we, we, we need a new board. And I think uh, uh, there should be an evaluation about the office as well. Because if if you if you work at a kennel club and you promote dogs, as I showed you, I think if you go on this way, we lose the fight. They have to stand up and they have to they have to stand for the pedigree dogs. The office okay. and the board. So ah. that's that's one of the solutions. But um, in in a way. Um, if you would, for example, manage to change the board and you would manage to get um, new people who would, uh, let's say, uh, fight the same fight um, as, as the, the breeders. Yes. Uh, what, what kind of fight would it be? What, what needs to no, be done? Then you, then, you, then you can fight together and say to Utrecht um, that it was a very poor uh, examination, a very poor test what they did. You go, you go back to, to, the, to the basics about the length of the nose and you come with another test. Yeah. That's, that can, then you will, yeah. That is the only solution I think we can do, that you go back and that you show another test and that you say, this is what they do in England, this is what they do in Norway, and it is much better. Because yeah. it, we all know that in Norwich terriers, it's the same. They have the same breathing problems, for example. And they don't, they, they don't look like a, French yeah. yeah, and they have a longer noise, nose. And a longer nose. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I see that some of these groups are collecting money for the, for the lawyers and for the court. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you think that this is going to be one of the solutions uh, to try to find the justice on the court and to explain what is actually fact and what, yeah, is, I, what yeah. is not a fact? I think, yeah, my partner is a lawyer. He said, he said it is not easy to change the law anymore. But so you have to, you have to, uh, to come with another test and to show that there are better things, that, you know, and, and then you can win. Yeah. And they will win, I think, because yeah, we are probably... fight, we are fighting for the breeds, and I'm sure that we go, that we will fight and we'll win. Yeah. And and um, uh, I think that is also very important that the Dutch breeders got a lot of support from the from the clubs from all around the world, yeah. um, who have been really really helpful in this situation yeah. and, and have really uh, tried. I think uh, in in a way that can be a, a good thing for for uh, for the for the ones who are fighting against it. Um, let me read a few more comments. Uh, Anne keeps saying thank you, Hans. Lovely interview. John Williams saying, uh, as Hans said, it will not stop with the brahi breeds. Next will be the short leg dogs, then the dogs with no coats, then the small dogs. Um, Peter Akkad saying, Hans, you are so courageous. Respect. Maya Sandman saying, Hans, thank you for being with us breeders. Uh, Peter Akkad saying, I hope democracy will work in the right way. A new board that fights for the breeds is really necessary. Maria Luisa Doppelreiter saying respect for such honest and courageous words, Hans Vandenberg. Uh, let me see. John Williams saying, um, and we must fight against the breeding without, uh, without pedigree or from puppy farms. 
uh, Rinia Tomer saying uh, vet needs to distinguish a purebred dogs with a pedigree from a look-alike from a puppy mill. Martin Verslu is saying thank you for the open interview and your support. Hans, uh, Patricia Nemirovsky, the Alcina, fantastic interview. Thank you. So it has been a lot of people, Hans, um, watching this interview and uh, we got... Uh, or let's say I got what I was expecting from you, a very honest uh, um, interview with, with, uh, from somebody who actually puts the things how they are without any politics, diplomacy or anything, trying to, to help as much as, as it possible. Um, let's, let's put it as my last question for you, Hans, um, not only about the Brachy bit, not only about the Netherlands, uh, but about the future of the, of the sport in general. Are you optimistic or you are pessimistic? I am optimistic. Maybe, maybe we must look a little bit inside our hobby. How do we show them? How do we prepare them? Maybe we must look a little bit around what we do. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But, um, but that's that I will talk to you in uh, private, but, but I think a dog standing maybe for hours on a table. It, yeah. Yeah, of course. I, I mean, yeah. we need to be, we need to be clear that there are also things that we are doing wrong. That's no yeah. doubts about that. I do the same. Or I, 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 when I trim a dog, automatically they stay there as well. But we must also look inside and look at our hobby, and that's not so uh, difficult. I think, for example, when. Uh, you see a Shih Tzu and drinking liquid as a rabbit, mm -hmm. you know, because it's getting wet here. It looks maybe strange mm -hmm. for normal, pe for yeah, normal yeah. people. Well, ma many things that we do look strange for normal people. Yeah. We also so, need, so we need to live with that. So maybe we must sometimes do a little bit more normal as well. And I yeah. go through because I do the same. Yeah, and 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 um, what would be your message, let's say, for the end, for the young generations, for the people who are starting to be involved in the sport? Um, what would be, let's say, your message for them? Uh, what, because actually, obviously, the future is <laughs> in the hands of the of the young people. What they should do different than than us? What what there is to to change from what we have done? Um, I think um, the young generation, um, they have the same passion as we had, as we have, because that's in, in the world. I, I remember I had, uh, I worked at the university and there was a girl and she had a, a student and she had a hobby showing. And, we, and then she's always said, we are the only ones, but she had the same yeah. passion. So that. That is that's happening. Um, for the future, I will say, don't go maybe more professional in showing and trimming and everything. You know, sometimes, yeah. If you see sometimes in the in, I I, I have to be polite, but sometimes you <laughs> see dogs and they are so so. Let's say over. First and overshown and everything. Try to be a bit normal. Mm -hmm. Show a bit normal, maybe. But yeah. yeah Can yeah. you help me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you want. To try to get, uh, let's say, an an image that is more acceptable for the for the general public. Yeah, I was in uh, last year. I was in in uh, at the show, and there came a huge box with a standard poodle, mm -hmm. and then people said. Why are they in these boxes? They can't move. You know, and that is, we are used to it because we say, oh, yes, before the coat. And, oh, 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 oh. But it is a bit strange. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, as I said, a lot of things that we do are strange for normal people. I, I remember, I remember when I bought, when I bought my first dog and I, I went for my first dog show and I bought the box, you know, and I had put the dog in the box. My mother said to me, you put him once again in this box in front of me and I will kill you. Because for her, that was not something that 
that she could accept. No, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but okay, yeah, yeah. But I think I think in general what we what we need, um, and you were saying this before, uh, we need to unite. We I think this is the the first thing that we need to do to start to fight together. Uh, for the better of the of the yeah, and to and to, f and to fight uh, for pedigree dogs and and to to tell people uh, how healthy they are in general. Yeah. Because we do all the tests. Yeah, exactly. We exactly. do all the things, and we try to breed uh, nice, healthy dogs, not just a healthy dog. Yeah. I like a nice Scotty healthy yeah that's it yeah yeah let and me read a few what, more what, what is wrong eh? if you if you if you enjoy a nice dog around you nothing absolutely no. nothing no yeah but and I, and what a lot of people were saying before i think we also need to say that that the dog breeds uh, together with the uh, breeds of other animals are actually a kind of a natural um, cultural heritage of the countries yeah, uh, yeah. When, which needs to be protected in a way Al also yeah. this yeah look look at some pictures of griffon and not only griffon but look at a, look at a king charles look at a, a, a japan chin yeah many 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 years ago they looked exactly the same in the head shape yeah yeah and a lot of them are better in the constructions construction than 50 years ago and that yeah. we forget yeah yeah that's true that's true um there are a few more comments hans that i'm going to read uh, to you uh alton meng saying hans has more and better brains than the whole board and office in amsterdam um Celiston saying thank you both for this interview tough questions tough subject courageous answers uh, Venture Charlotte Cogley saying it's behind my belief how anyone can throw away the Cambridge study. There is not, to my knowledge, any bigger standard uh, study. Great work, Hans van den Berg, and for mentioning Norway and all the work done with the Kennel Club, the Breed Clubs, and the Norwegian government to use the Cambridge Boas project. Uh, Tony Groydang saying thanks. Maya Sandman saying. Uh, Ante, thank you too for the opportunity to show our side of the deal and for giving Hans the chance to speak his mind. Um, Tanya van der El saying probably the people who don't own these breeds are also scared. What will the future bring? I know I'm confused and fear the future. Um, uh, Filippo Gianola is saying, Hans, would you, would you have expected more incisive support from the FCI? Um, Peter Akat saying, yes, we have to stand up to point that the FCI will not help, I'm afraid. So there has been a lot of comments, Hans, over 130 comments, um, almost 100 people watching live and many of them will watch it later. Um, I want to thank to everybody for, for uh, leaving the comments, for uh, asking the questions. Um, to you, Hans, of course, I want to thank for, uh, for the interview, for uh, being so honest and open about the subject. Um, I'm going to say here um, once again, uh, I am trying to do these interviews as professional as I can. And uh, definitely, if there is a person from the Dutch Kennel Club who would like to, to talk to me uh, and who would like to say also their part of the story, I would be more than happy to, to welcome them as guests in my interview. Um, uh, I think that we all need to start to talk and I think we all need to try to find a solution because I... I <laughs> I really hope that we all have the same goal. Um, yeah. So, anyhow, Hans, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope it has not been too stressful for you. Uh, give my regards to Cor, uh, and I hope that this uh, Corona nightmare is going to finish soon, and we will be able to to meet somewhere quite soon. I hope so. Yes, we all hope so. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and see you next Wednesday. Thank you, Hans, and good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.